right. So takeaways from Jill's teaching techniques one. Everything she shared. And I like what she said about effort and improvement, you know, and, and, and grading on their own ability, each student on their own ability. I, I had a student at another uh, institution last semester, and, and she came in, she's just mm -hmm. not being nurtured on me lately, nothing. <laughs> and so my first project was due, a journal article critique, you know, and I, you know, they knew that I was going to go through, um, you know, a safe side, safe side, whatever, you know, plagiarism detector. And her first comes in is like 70 some odd percent plagiarized. So I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to accept this, but I will give you, you know, another opportunity to, to um, redo this project and to put it in your own words. And uh, I was like, I believe you can do this. I believe you can do this. You're very articulate. I believe you can do this. So she did. And then her, and she did a good job. And the next class, couple of classes, she's sitting up right. She's paying more attention. And then her next project was beautiful. And also that's effort and improvement. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty, pretty, pretty remarkable. Yeah. Sure. And she went from one of my, you know, not one of my best students yeah. to one of my best. Just for that part. Yeah. Well, that speaks to Jill's uh, holistic approach, right? It took mm -hmm. you to be a cheerleader, mm -hmm. supporter, to say, I know what happened here. I'm going to give right. you another chance, right. and I believe in you. And sometimes that's all that it, that's all that it takes for someone to something to click mm -hmm. or to care. Yes. Well, okay, she cares, so I'll, I'll try. Right. Very yeah, when Jill talks about that, it, re it resonates with me because um, I guess just naturally you find yourself having to be the counselor, the advisor, you know, the, the, the coach for your students mm -hmm. if you expect them to care about your class. You know? Um, or succeed. It's not just showing up to teach the class and then leave. You have to make yourself available before or after. Um, it's kind of just it's part of the part of the gig. So, um, and even you know, we get emails. You know, please share this information with your students. We can't assume that students know everything that's happening on campus, that what opportunities are available. Um, so there's there's kind of that added element that that's required of us. To make sure that students are being communicated with. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I. This one's a bit harder to comment on because I feel like, uh, aside from what they said, a lot of her stuff is very hands-on, mm -hmm. and it's a very hands-on class. And I right. feel like sometimes it's. Kind of hard to translate that to a Psych 101 course, which is has, is a lot more academic in nature, and there are projects I have, but a lot of it is like a lot of it is like learning the material, and I try to get around that by asking, like I said, we're describing asking them about their experiences with things and trying to relate it back to things in real life and show it how it can apply to real life situations, uh, because. Uh, the book is kind of ignorant about that stuff, you know, the, the, and I have to do that organically based on what the students know and what's going on, you know. And I just feel it's a, it's a bit different with a very hands-on class like that, where you are learning how to how to do something like that, you know. I don't know. Keep thinking about it, different classes. Well, let's see what Leslie has to say. Leslie is a counselor, so you're going to get a different 